In this video, I'm gonna talk about another option, which is using a noise gate uh, to eliminate some of the background noise and tidy up the tracks. In order to get a noise gate, if I go into my mixer, I'm gonna to go to the insert, I'm gonna to go to plugin, I'm gonna go Avid, that's the Avid plugin, and find the Dynamic 3 Expanded Gate, click on the, that. The default will be for gate. So what I'm gonna do is now go back into the mixer and what I'm going to do is loop a small section. So I'm going to loop this section here. Seeing so here, the you can hear the gates already kind of a default setting. But in order for me to get the gate to work the way I want it, I suggest setting the threshold and the range to so the threshold to zero and the range to minus eighty. So this time, while it's playing, it's gating really heavily. Seeing here, it's just kind of just allows just about allows that um, tom hit through. My first thing is I'm going to wind the threshold back. So the threshold is the point at which the gate will begin to work. So when the signal exceeds that threshold, the gate opens. I'll then adjust the hold, which determines how long the gate stays open for. The release is then once that hold has been is finished, how long the gate will stay on and release before it closes again and then stops uh, any sound coming through. The range is another aspect that I'll look at, which basically gives me control of the bleed before the gate sort of fully opens, because uh, it can help eliminate, I think, uh, an artifact called chattering if the gate's opening and closing too quickly. And the attack time is how fast that gate reacts and opens and closes, essentially. So I'm gonna hit play and just wind back the threshold. So you can hear a little bit of the background, which is fine. I can just slow the attack down a bit more. You can hear it affecting the initial, uh, the tom as well there when by doing that. So I can just wind this back a bit more. So it's getting the attack, but it's not holding over long enough. So I'm gonna turn the hold up. That's getting better. Still needs to be longer. Okay, that's sounding cool. And just alter the release. Maybe a bit more on the hold. That's cool. So you can hear then the tom just decay naturally. Bear in mind without. And then the range just plays with the um, bleed of the mic. So if I turn that up, you'll see. It starts to allow more of that bleed through the noise. So I'm going to keep that fairly low, actually. Just pull that back a touch. So there we go. Ooh. So now what I've actually done is managed to gate a lot of the background noise. So that's this is with it without the gate. With. It just makes it a bit tidier so that any EQ that I do and stuff is more focused on the floor tom than it is on the uh, background noise. I mean, the other thing I could have done really is go through all of this and then cut out all the in-between hits. Now on this one, it's quite simple and straightforward because I can see where the tom hits are. I can just gradually work my way through and going, yep, yeah, there's a tom hit. Uh, it doesn't take too long but it can be a bit laborious when you're then having to do the fades and make sure that you're not losing things. And so that's a, that's another way of dealing with editing the audio and that's using uh, the effects and the plugins. The Pro Tools one is actually a very good gate uh, and very useful uh, compared with other DAWs such as Logic.